everybody and welcome back to my channel i hope all of you had a wonderful holiday i don't have my chair right now so i'm going to try to do this tutorial and hopefully you get it with me standing <laughs> okay so what we're going to make today is a tool skirt with satin trim and i already have my fabric pre-cut i got this fabric from um, gifts international and i will leave the link below it comes in a 20 yard a bolt and it's pre folded and I'll show you what I mean as you can see I already have my cut for my daughter's waist size which is 20 and it is 16 yards of this fabric here and what I mean by pre folded is it's already folded here so what we're going to do is stitch all the way around about a uh, one inch um from the top you want to leave it open right here because that's where you're going to spool your elastic through now as far as the elastic waist goes because you're going to have the elastic waistband and don't worry the uh, the elastic will not show as much because the skirt's going to be so gathered that you're not really going to see it so i'll show you a picture right here of what the skirt looks like already finished so that's what we're going to make today and as I said, this is 16 yards of fabric. I actually saw this video on another YouTuber that I watch and I got the idea from her and I thought these were so cute um, also to make for my daughter and to sell. So um, yeah, so with the folded part, what you're going to do after you sew all the way around a straight stitch you're going to attach the satin now if you feel more comfortable doing it before putting your satin on and this is going to be cut at 16 yards as well and I also got this satin from the same place so as I said I will leave the link to the place where I, I purchased the fabric from it's pretty inexpensive I buy stuff from them all the time they have satin ribbon they have grow grain ribbon they have tool by the bolt they have tool by the spool um, satin fabric all kinds of things that you can find on that site so um, this is 16 yards as well so what I'm going to do is start here and I have kind of a coordinating thread in here so as I said you're going to start by doing a straight stitch this is going to be a little difficult for me because I'm standing so um, you're going to do about one inch down and if you need to measure just go ahead and get your measuring tape and measure down about one inch. I like to do like one and a quarter just so I have a little bit more room. Um, it's totally up to you what you choose to do at that point. If you can find an easier way to sew through because like I said this is 16 yards and I will leave the link. Um, I'm not the link. I will leave the measurements for up to um, size 12 starting at what is this size? zero to six months I will leave all the measurements how much fabric you're going to need how long you're going to need it as well as the waist so I will leave all of that information for you so you know how to cut how much to cut and um, how long you want it this is cut to my liking I kind of after I um, got the tool out of out of the pack I'm so lost today I'm sorry I have so many things I have to do but I wanted to get this video done saying it's how it's the first video of the year I want to start you off with a sewing tutorial so um, I cut this I measured this to my daughter and see how long I wanted it actually I have all her measurements for things that I make for her and I normally measure from waist to like the top of her knee or maybe a little bit further up um, that's just because that's how she likes to order things so I tend to make things based on how she likes it so here we go we're gonna start this off by like I said sewing about an inch down inch and a half inch and a quarter whatever you may like you can go ahead and use the measurements here on your sewing machine to give you um, what you need but you can mark it or whatever works for you best and I'm using kind of a, a goldish um, thread just because that's all I can really find 
and it will match perfectly with the ivory color. So my kids have confiscated the chair, which is why this is so difficult for me today. Okay. So let's get started. You just, like I said, you're going to take all of this fabric and you're just going to do a straight stitch all the way around all of this fabric. And you could put like a bucket or a bowl down. Um, if you're sitting, obviously you could put it under your lap because I'm not sitting at this point. It makes it a little bit difficult for me, but um, yeah. So let's get started. Don't forget to back stitch to secure it. I'm going to raise my length just a little bit. Okay. And don't pull it, just let it flow freely through your sewing machine. If it gets snagged, um, one thing that you may want to do, I gave this suggestion before, is to take either some tissue paper and sew it along with your uh, fabric, or you could put a piece of tape under your foot and that'll keep it from sticking so much. So we're just gonna keep going on through here, like so. So you're just going to do this. As you can see, it's already getting started and it's leaving that little casing for you to put, push your elastic through right here and you're just doing a straight stitch all the way around. As I said, this is for my daughter. She has a 20 inch waist and I measured this down, let's see how far I measured this down, 12 inches down. Um, so that kind of goes like not all the way to the top of her knee but like right before and this is a uh, 420 inch waist 16 yards of this and 16 yards of this and we're going to continue around with the straight stitch and then i'm going to show you how to place the satin on and what it's going to look like once we're done so i'm going to finish this you go ahead and do yours and we'll get to the next step really soon so i got my chair um anyway I am coming around to the last little bit of um, the fabric. So as you can see, I have my casing here and the two layers are now sewn together. So it'll make it a lot easier when it's time to put the elastic through. And as you can see, you don't, you don't want to, sorry, because sometimes I notice that you can't hear me over the sewing. You don't want to push or pull on it. I'm just, I'm just actually holding my fabric just ever so slightly and I have a box you can use a tote or a big bowl or whatever to have my fabric fall into that um as it goes through because like I said it's 16 yards and the yardage is based on the child's waist and you'll see if you use less than what you need you will see the elastic a lot more through it which is why we're using 16 yards of fabric for a 20 inch waist Now what you're going to do is pull all this fabric back to you and then you are going to start putting the satin on and this is a lot of fabric and it will make any child that you are making this skirt for feel like a, a princess I mean because this fabric is 
it's delicate, it's light, it's, I like using girly colors. Um, I'm trying to work on getting my <laughs> Etsy store filled up with some new exciting things that you can purchase from me. So, um, you know, check my Etsy store often. I'm going to have so many things coming up this year that I will be selling in the Etsy store. I'm actually waiting on some of my supplies to come in for other things that um, will be sold in that store, hair accessories and things like that. And as you're working with this, if your floor has a lot of lint on it, you will notice that lint will stick in the tool. So try uh, your best to either make sure your area is clean or to um, just wash your item after. So to prevent the frayed edges, go ahead, I hate this lighter, just go ahead and heat seal the ends just like you would if you're making um, a hair bow or something like that. Just heat seal your ends with the lighter or candle whatever works best for you try not to burn it since you are putting this on the skirt you don't want the burn marks I'm gonna go ahead now and pull this apart as you can see and I'm not pinning I'm not pinning anything my satin is a double face so it doesn't matter which side that I sew on so what I'm gonna do is take my fabric and place the satin right on the edge and I'm just going to let that go through the machine just like I did when I was sewing the waistband. So at this point you can already have your elastic cut. I actually don't have my elastic cut right now. So I just sew in the middle of the satin and I make sure like I said I'm only sewing on the top layer I'm only for me I'm only using the satin on one side on the inside layer I'm not gonna have satin you can put satin on your inside layer I'm just not so what I do is just make sure this is straightened out as much as possible because the length of the satin should match along with the length of the tool. Length. Sorry, I don't know what to me today. The kids are just back to school today, so I'm still on vacation mode. So you're still going to do a back stitch, just like you would with anything else, to secure it. And just go ahead and sew right in the middle or wherever you would like to sew to secure your satin to your tool. And I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, so I'll be stopping a lot more to make sure it's all straightened out on my end. Just because that's how I am. I'm psychotic people. No, I'm just joking. Um, but this goes all the way around. Now, if you're a beginner, you probably do want to pin your satin to your tool as you're sewing just to make it easier for you. Um, I've been sewing for a while so a lot of times I don't pin if you're wondering why. Um, I eyeball things a lot. That's just how I do things. You'll hear me saying that a lot. I eyeball it just because that's what I do. This can get really frustrating um, just because you're working with so much fabric and so much satin. It's just a lot and it's bulky. So it can get a bit frustrating when you're going through this. So just take your time. It's not a rush, it's not a race to get it done as long as you're getting it done. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this. And you go ahead and finish yours if you're sewing along with me right now. And then the last step 
would be putting the elastic in and sewing a seam to put it all together and you're all done. Okay guys, we are coming around to the last little bit of fabric and I just wanna let you know, this part of the process is not going to go as fast as the other part of the process because you're trying to make sure, especially if you didn't pin, you're trying to make sure that it's even and that there's not a lot of tool hanging underneath the set, unless of course that's how you want it. So I'm just gonna finish this up. And again, just to go over, we have this straight stitch sewn for our waist, and we're gonna put the elastic through this uh, casing that we left here. We have two layers. This is going to be the inside layer. This is going to be the outside layer. And I'm just attaching the satin to the outside layer of the skirt. You're not pulling, you're not pushing, you're just kind of holding to stabilize it as close through. And I've had to stop quite a few times to make sure that my tool and my satin is lined up. Now one thing I did run into is um, not cutting enough of the satin. So I had another piece here that I had to cut. I kind of overlapped it over this piece here. If this was for someone, if I was making this for someone, um, I would definitely make sure that the satin is the same size as the tool. And I don't know how I messed that up, but um, still, even though I'm making it for my daughter, I still want it to look nice and pretty. So I'm just trying my best to make sure that's matched up. So when she puts it on, you can't really tell. perfect to wear for a holiday event, birthday party, you know, Easter will be coming up in a few months. Um, pictures, these are really pretty skirts to wear for any occasion, honestly, if she just wants to wear it around the house and frolic around it, <laughs> it's a pretty, pretty skirt to do that in. to go back through and cut any thread pieces if you have to if you had to re-thread um, your spool and you had to start over and midway through like I did um, I go back towards the end to make sure that all the hanging threads are off okay guys so now that we have the satin on the skirt we're going to do the next few steps okay guys so now that we are done putting the satin on we're going to gather this skirt put it in our lap put it in a bowl or tote or whatever you have um hanging on the side of you and we're going to put the elastic waistband through the casing that we made for the skirt so i'm going to move this out of the way so you can see what i'm doing and i have my elastic here um, I don't need, well, yeah, I do need the sewing machine still. And our safety pin. Now, I cut my elastic, and this is a non-roll um, elastic waist, I mean, piece of elastic. It's white. Yes, it's white. You, If you find a uh, color coordinating non-roll elastic, I would suggest you use that. I'm using this. This is just fine. I'm going to take my safety pin here and put it on the end of my elastic. And I'm going to start 
spreading this through it doesn't really matter which end you start at um, if you start on the inside you may have to flip the skirt over when you're done to sew the two pieces together but that's fine so um, yeah I'm just gonna I'm gonna take your safety pin and you're gonna weed through this little opening that you have you're gonna weed through your elastic now what you want to do and what you're going to find is that this is going to try to go in there. One thing you can do is put another safety pin on the end of this just in case that happens or do your best to hold on to it. Normally I just hold on to mine. I'm pretty good at holding on to it. So I kind of just go like this. I'm holding this in and I kind of just feed it through. Just feed that safety pin through all the way through the 16 yards or however many yards of fabric you need to make um, the skirt you're just going to keep feeding that through and sometimes I pull along the way just to get the elastic in there because once it starts getting bunched up you don't want to have to um, spend all that time pulling to get the elastic through if you know what I mean so if you have any questions so far with anything um, that you've seen Please go ahead and ask me um, if you want to know how to alter it in some other kind of way. If you don't like the way that um, this is and you want some suggestions from me, go ahead and ask that as well in the comments. Um, I honestly made my waistband casing a little bit too big, but that's fine. Once all this gets through, you're not even going to be able to tell. So um, I'm going to go ahead. This process is not going to take as long as put the satin on the bottom, but it is a pretty tedious process and you're just going to keep on feeding this through, feeding it through, feeding it through until you get all the way to the other end of the skirt. And then once you're done with that, you're going to sew it together. You don't have to sew it together. I do um, just because it looks better to me that way. Um, if you don't, it's fine. It's so much fabric. You're not even really going to know that it's not sewn together. Um, I just like to sew things um, just to have that more kind of professional look so um, I'll show you how to sew it together once we're done doing this so I'm gonna go ahead and finish mine you go ahead and finish yours and I will definitely have all the measurements um, for the skirt in the different sizes placed in the beginning or um, in the end I'll actually have it coming up through the end of what you need to make the skirt and also where I purchased my tool from. Okay guys, so now we are finished weeding this through so you can take your safety pin off now. I am going to take this and sew it together. Sorry, I have a loose thread from another part that came on my skirt. So, this is the back part of my skirt here. You can see this doesn't have the satin on it. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to sew it on the this, on this side. So you should be looking at your back part that doesn't have the satin. The part that has the satin should be on the inside when you're sewing your elastic together. It's a really big poofy skirt now, so guys, you have to pull on it, push it out the way, get the poof out the way. So you're just going to take this and do a straight stitch. Okay, and make sure you're not sewing any of the tool when you're sewing um, the elastic together. So I'm going to make my a zigzag stitch. May sometimes have to push it through. I don't do a back stitch because when I initially start on the elastic, because I go over it maybe three or four times, so it's going to be secure either way. where 
I can poke that up and lay it down and then sew that part with a straight stitch. You don't have to do it, it's just something that I do to make sure my elastic is extra secure just because I don't have a daughter that likes to sit down. She likes to play and roll around and flip and twirl um, even when she's wearing a skirt. So I like to make sure whatever I'm making for her is going to be secure. other side which may be a little bit trickier but uh, maybe not in my thread unthreaded I'm using a thread that's not really meant for sewing it's meant for embroidering but it's the only thing I had to match with the skirt I'm sorry for the noise, guys. I tried to get this done and make the time. So now, like I said, you can either be finished and straighten your skirt out, or you can attach the layers together, which is what I'm going to do. So what you're going to do? Don't tell me I did. Okay. <laughs> I thought I did it crooked. Cricket. So I'm going to go ahead and flip that back out. Then I'm going to take my inside layer. Hold on. Ugh, messing up here. Okay. So I'm going to take each layer and attach it to itself one by one. I'm not going to. So I'm going to take the layer that doesn't have the satin and I'm going to pull that up so it's out of my way right now. Then I'm going to take this other layer with the satin and I'm going to sew it. And it may be a little tricky trying to find out where it is, but as long as you have the bottom pieces um, even, then you should be okay. So start from the bottom and you can either pin it or freehand it sewing it together. Guys, once you have the two pieces together that you're going to sew, just go ahead and uh, do a straight stitch down. Make sure you got the stitch. Okay, so this part is done. The skirt is done. If you're adding a bow, I'll show you how to do that. I would suggest you sew it on, not hot glue it, because a lot of times the hot glue just doesn't stick. So you want to just kind of even out your tool a little bit so the skirt is really full. Just kind of pull along there like this and get it all nice and evened out. Give it a little shake. I like to give my skirts a little shake. And there you have it. It is nice and cool and beautiful. This is your little satin trimmed tool skirt. Now, I'm going to set this aside just for a second. If you're doing a bow, I'm going to show you the easiest way to do this. You're going to Take your satin, the same satin fabric or whatever trim you're using for your skirt. Make a little crease to make it even. 
if you don't how, know how to make bowls and make the fishtails, um, basically what I did, and I do have a video that shows you how to make bows, but you just take the, um, the satin at the end and you just cut it in a diagonal and then you'll get it like this and make sure you heat seal it. So I'm just going to take this down and I'll turn it this way so you guys can get a better view of it. I'm going to try to make this as even as possible when you're doing it. So I'm going to just give this a crisscross here, just like the, uh, the Cancer Foundation symbol. Just like that, try to make it as even as possible. Like I said, I, I eyeball everything, so I don't know what the diameter is between the two. If you want me to do that for you, just let me know. And you're going to pull that up to that crease you made. And now you have it. So now what you're going to do is just take it, fold it in like that, fold that side just the same, and now you have your bow. And you can fix it all up when you, um, once you put it together. If you don't like it, if it's too, if the loops are too big for you, just go ahead and pull down a little bit. down a little bit more. I don't like my satin loops to be so floppy when I'm doing grow grain it's a little bit different because grow grain ribbon is stiffer and it looks better when it's a little bit bigger so there you go so what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to take my thread and I'll actually show you an easier way because sometimes that can get a little tricky to do so you have your bow here you have your little crease you can take it and hold on to it right there take your needle and thread and just pop it on through like this just wrap it around make sure sorry I heard something okay there we go and you just wrap that around I like to wrap it around a few times to secure it. There we go. And pull the thread through the center and pull on it. And that's just the easier way to make a bow. And then for me, I like to go through one more time. If I can, I'm using a thick needle right now but sometimes it doesn't work so instead I'm just going to take it back around the back and I'm going to pull it through like so and then I'm going to take it to make a knot just put the thread through the loop and you have a knot So there you go. Okay guys, so now that you have both together, we're just gonna place a little bit of hot glue right in the center. And I have a 5 8 inch piece of ivory ribbon, satin ribbon that I already had, so I didn't cut that from this ribbon. And then you're just gonna take it around back. You may need to cut it slightly if you cut it too long which I always do I like to cut more than to cut less than not have enough so you're just going to take that around and place the hot glue there you can also sew this on if you don't want to hot glue it you can sew it and then you're going to just take the other piece around you may want to straighten your ribbon how you want it to look before you put that last piece of ribbon around 
And then go ahead, if you need to cut it, which I do again. So I'm just going to place that glue. Okay. And gluing that in the center can make it a little tricky to sew, but I'm going to show you a little trick to do to get this bow on without having to worry about going sewing through the hot glue. So we're going to take our skirt and I'm going to put hers in the middle. Let's see, I'll have to turn it my way for a minute. And because this skirt is so full, if you haven't already put your label on it, um, which I'm not doing for this particular skirt because it's for my daughter. It could be the front or the back. <laughs> and if you're the type of person that puts your labels on the inside of the side seam or something like that, um, then you could put the ball in the front or the back. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is take my needle and come through my elastic. And I'm just going to grab the top of that center piece where the bow where the glue isn't and I'm gonna take that and just sew that through be careful I do have it knotted but sometimes it comes out like this so I'm gonna start at the top first and then I'm gonna work my way to the bottom to get it really secured on here For this particular project you don't want to wrap it around because you'll be able to see that thread you don't want to do that you want it to look as professional as possible see I like to have mine really really tight so I'm going to go and do this a few more times all the way across the top edge of the bow and through the elastic okay so now we have it on now what I'm going to do is take this I'm not going to I'm not going to cut it <laughs> at this point I'm going to take it through the bottom part so that now our top and our bottom part of our bow is secure. So this bow isn't going to come off. And I'm going to do just like I did with the top. And just go through a few times. Making sure our bow is secured. So since I have the top so secure, I'm only going to go through one more time just because that's what I want to do <laughs> for my benefit. I like things to be super secure. When I made things for her when she was a baby, I wouldn't secure it so much, but she would play so much with her brothers that things would rip and I'd have to go and re-sew and re-sew and as you know, once a seam rips, the garment is never really the same anymore so because that ripped and I was going to do it anyway what I do is just find that, that part of the thread and just put a little hot glue on it so it's not going to come loose so this is our project for today our chat so this is our project for today it's our satin trim tool skirt and it's so full and it's so pretty and I love this color. I do have silver and black and white and pink and I also have peach. Um, so if you don't want to make this and you just want to purchase it, you can purchase this in my Etsy shop. It is available right now for purchase in uh, several sizes. Um, and even if you want one for yourself, you can custom uh, I can customize that to fit adults too. So this is our project for today and Happy New Year everyone. It's come so fast. Just so many things 
um, have gone on for me good and bad in 2015 and I'm just hoping that 2016 is a lot better. I'm hoping I get a lot more viewers and subscribers and I'm hoping that I'll have a lot more tutorials that my current viewers and subscribers will love. Um, I just have so many things planned for this year. I'm really excited to present everything that I have for you and the things that we're going to be doing this year is going to be great. I'm just not going to be sticking to sewing tutorials and craft projects. We're going to do so much more on this channel this year. You'll see a lot more of Autumn and maybe Cameron because we'll be doing recipes and um, makeup tutorials even though you guys know I don't wear makeup but I will